2016 sur survey showed that there was a decline since the previous survey in 2010, although this wasn't a, a significant decline. There were declines in um, Scotland, England, uh, Wales and Northern Ireland, and also on the Isle of Man. Looking back into 2004, when the previous survey as well, there was a significant decline in, in the overall population between 2004 and 2016. Uh, those were our main take-home figures. The survey this year is the sixth national survey. Um, the first took place um, over two years in 1988 to 89. Um, since 1994, we've tried to run a survey every six years. Um, because of the importance of uh, the hen harrier as a priority um, breeding bird in, in the UK. Uh, so ideally the survey should have taken place in 2022, but we had to delay it to um, secure funding and to make sure there was a strong partnership with RSPB and other organisations, particularly the, um, the uh, national um, conservation um, agencies. The survey's survey follows a standard method which we've used since the first national survey um, which basically two visits a minimum of two visits anyway between um, the beginning of April or the end of March uh, ideally uh, and the end of July with certainly one visit in the April to May period and a second visit in the June to, June to J July period the surveys are based on uh, surveying suitable habitat within 10 kilometer squares. Um, a lot of that is by sort of vantage point watches over suitable ha potentially suitable habitat and um, searching by foot. So it's a sort of standard method, but there's different approaches within each of the countries. Um, that's partly because in Scotland, there's the range is potentially, well, the range is much greater than uh, the other um, countries. So it's more of a, um, a sampling approach as we can't cover the full range in Scotland. I'm Ian Thompson. I work for the RSBB investigations team in Scotland. This national survey is going to be fascinating in many ways. The hen harrier is a bird that has not done well in the last 20 years throughout the UK. The last two surveys have showed a substantial decline in the number of breeding pairs in the UK. And certainly in the east to south of Scotland, where I work particularly closely, on the grouse moors we saw something like a 57% decline in our number of pairs of hen harriers. Obviously, there have been a number of political developments, particularly in Scotland, over the last few years, and we now see the Scottish Parliament considering legislation that will lead to, hopefully, the licensing of driven grouse shooting, where the right to shoot will be dependent on legal and sustainable management of the land. And this provision, these provisions have come into place primarily to deal with raptor persecution. The Scottish Government has taken steps over the last really 20 years since devolution to try and bear down on those who are killing birds of prey. Uh, and while it has had some effect, particularly with regard to illegal poisoning, unfortunately birds like the hen harriers still tend to disappear very quickly should they linger in areas where driven grouse shooting dominates the landscape. We hope having regulation of the shooting industry will finally be a deterrent to these crimes. The reason this survey is so important is that the hen harrier is a real keystone species, a really important measure of how healthy our upland environment is. Much of our country is missing hen harriers. There should be hundreds of pairs of hen harriers in the east and south of Scotland, for example. There should be a lot more in England. And one of the reasons that these birds are missing, or the key driver of these birds' absence, is persecution. And we see year after year, hen harriers that have been fitted with satellite tags are either found dead and having proven them have been illegally killed, or they simply disappear under suspicious circumstances. 
if persecution is declining, as the grouse shooting industry likes to keep telling us, then one would think that this hen harrier survey will show quite a marked rise in the population, not just in some areas, but nationally. So time will tell. My time uh, working with hen harriers goes back to uh, 1974 and um, it was then that I first found myself up in North Wales and uh, discovered that hen harriers were here and in fact had been for some time since they recovered uh, from first arrival back in 1958. The amount of ground that I cover uh, is quite extensive. Uh, it involves two of our major uplands in North Wales, uh, coming from uh, the Berwyn, where we are here, over to Mignight. Um, and I don't cover all of both, but quite a substantial portion of Berwyn and uh, about a third of the Mignight. Very fortunately, um, here in Wales, uh, certainly on my watch, hen harriers are doing perfectly well. Uh, they are stable. Um, we don't have the scourge of human persecution that seems to affect some parts of the UK, thank goodness. Um, and um, although it's very often the case that the reporting of hen harriers coincides with bad news, um, I've for a long time been saying we have a good news story here. I felt it's absolutely appropriate to um, engage with and involve the people who own the land upon which harriers are actually nesting. Uh, the response I've had to that approach has been utterly positive. Uh, landowners have been thrilled to see all of the birds, not just hen harriers, but meadow pipits, wind chats, everything that's up here. But show them a hen harrier and far from being negative, they're totally positive. They recognise that they're the custodians of these species and if they don't look after them, it will be part of the heritage of this area which will be lost. I, a lot of the work I do, and the same goes with the other guys, is spent pretty well on your own, um, out on the mountain, basically spending many, many hours uh, sitting on vantage points with telescope um, and waiting and watching and waiting and watching and hoping that, you know, something materialises. What could be better than having a continued stable and safe population? And this is a bird which um, appears to be exactly that. It's, it's enjoying um, a, a perfectly um, stable uh, population. It's, uh, it's not declining. There's no, as far as we can see, no major threat. We're never complacent, of course, uh, but uh, the habitats here and whilst you've got the appropriate habitat which has got the food that they require and 95% plus is meadow pipit, that's what they are feeding on, maybe voles as well, when the, it's a good vole year. Um, but as long as you've got those ingredients, then it seems that hen harriers are actually doing okay. We must bear in mind that the hen harrier in Britain is not on the uh, southern edge of its breeding range in Europe. Many of the upland birds that we are saying goodbye to on these hills are actually um, on the southern edge of their range and it could well be, we don't know for sure, but it could well be that climate is actually already manifesting in the distribution of these birds in, in Britain, particularly these upland birds because they've got nowhere else to go. They've got to go north other, or, or higher in altitude and they've probably reached the top of the hill by now.